All right. I'm starting over. All right. Uh, I want to read to you today. Good morning and welcome. I want to read to you uh, the words of Solomon, the wisest of all men. Proverbs 4.23, this is what he said, Guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of life. Another translation says it so well, pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being. Obviously, Solomon is not speaking about our organ that pumps our blood, but he is speaking about our inner man. Here is some of the expressions that the Scripture uses. Uh, Joe, I need this back. <laughs> uh, inner man, your inner self, your inner being, your inward man, your new man, your spirit man, your, the spirit of man, the eternal spirit. Now, everyone has an inner man. Everyone has an innermost being. And the reason for that is because that's the way we were designed by our Creator. When God created man, He did not just do what He did with everything else. He decided to make man in his image and likeness, which means that we look a lot like him. The way that we are created is much like God, who is not created but is everlasting. So, just as God is one, he is all one, but he is expressed in three ways. So we as people, as human beings, are one. We have an eternal spirit. We have an, an eternal being and, but that is expressed in three ways. It is expressed by that spirit, but also by a soul and a body. So we are a spirit, but we have a soul and body. Now, I want you to notice what Solomon says. Solomon says you need to pay attention to the spirit man, your inner man, more. You need to guard that above all else. Why? Because your spirit man takes precedence and has priority over your body. Your spirit will live with or without a body, but your body cannot live without a spirit. Here is what James 2.26 says, a person's body that does not have a spirit is dead. So when my spirit leaves my body, my body dies, but my spirit leaves on. So my spirit has precedent over my body. Well, my spirit also has precedent over my soul, and my soul would include my thoughts and my feelings and my desires. Why would it have precedent? Because I am not created and have not been created to be driven and moved by my thoughts and my feelings and my desires. There's something higher and greater than that. And so when Jesus is speaking about our soul, this is what he says in Luke 21, 19, with your patience, possess your souls. And so there are things that are to be subjugated in my soul. There are things that are, be, that are to be subjected and overcome in my soul. And so if there are things that have to be overcome, come in my soul and mastered in my soul. There has to be something greater than that that will do the mastering. And so that is my spirit man. My spirit man has precedence over all of those. So this is why when Adam entered into the garden, the enemy knew that if he was going to overwhelm and overcome Adam, he had to target his spirit man. He could not come at him at his soul level or at his physical body level. He had to take back dominion, if he could, through the spirit of that man because that's where Adam was given the dominion. And the way that the enemy attempted to do that was to cause a scheme to get Adam to transgress. He offered a temptation to transgress. Now, when Adam transgressed, something happened. The Bible says God made a promise to Adam. It was a warning. In the day that you eat the fruit of the tree, you will what? Surely die. Well, it was not Adam's breathing that he lost in that day, but his spirit man took on death. It became a, a, a state of death. And as a result of that, he is now no longer functioning as a spirit man, but he is functioning out of his soul. He is functioning as a soul man and as a physical man only. So that which would take precedence and have priority was removed and put down by the transgression. And so the Bible says in Romans 5.12 that when man sinned, by one man sin entered the world, that was Adam, 
And then it says, and death spread to all men. So, every person then who is born in this world has a spirit, but that spirit is still born. And it is still born because it is taken on the death of what Adam caused in the garden. Now that death was not eventually, it was immediate. And so immediately everyone in Adam, because he is the natural head of all of humanity, and if it happens to the head, it happens to all. And so when death entered the head, then death then flowed to all, even those that were not yet existed, those who were not yet alive. Death was imputed to all of them. So when you and I are born, our spirit man, is still born not because it hasn't had oxygen it's because the death that was reigning through Adam has affected that spirit man so what did God do God then brought in another representative of humanity he brought in the head of all spiritual humanity because Adam transgressed and brought death and so this last Adam came and what did he do he didn't transgress he obeyed and he brought life and And so through him then, I am quickened. Just as Adam put death into my spirit, so Jesus then becomes a quickening spirit for me. Now, here's the, so to encounter Jesus is then to have your spirit man quickened. That's how you come alive. You come alive in the Spirit by encountering Jesus. And there is not a church that can do that for you. There's not a religion that can do that for you. There's not enough education. Uh, there's not enough money. There's, there's not enough of anything that can cause you to become a quickened person in your spirit other than through Jesus Christ. This is why the Bible calls Him the quickening Spirit. Because when I encounter Jesus... And I have a real encounter with Jesus. I am then, as the Bible declares, born again. Now, why does it say born? Because born suggests that something is coming alive. And I am now coming alive, and I am made alive in Christ Jesus. What was dead is now alive. So, I was, watch this, I was alive when God created me before the foundation of the world. When I was predestined to him, I was alive. Then along came Adam and I died. But then I was made alive again. I was resurrected by Jesus Christ who is that quickening spirit. So I have experienced his resurrection which means I have now come alive in my spirit. Now, because of that, because of this centrality of the spirit man, the enemy's target is always to the spirit man. So consider, the spirit man is now the communication center. It is the control center. It is the command center for my life. And the enemy knows that if he is going to to have his way, he must ultimately infect and affect my spirit man because that's where everything is happening. The beginning and ending of all things happens in my spirit man. Now, I want to give you today a couple of reasons, two or three reasons why your spirit man is so important. Why does Solomon say you must guard it? Your innermost being, you must protect it, watch over it, keep it healthy. Why? First of all, it is because your spirit man is the center of all awareness. Here's what Proverbs says, Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of a person, the spirit, the inner man, is the lamp of the Lord and it lights up what is deep down inside them. Oh, so my spirit man is the place, the center of illumination. It is where revelation comes. It is where perception happens. It is where 
conception happens in the Spirit. It is where the discerning and the deciphering and the decoding happens. This is where the weighing and judging happens. This is where I receive from God. The only way that I can receive from God, who is a Spirit, remember what Jesus told the woman? If you're going to worship God, you must worship Him in what? In spirit. Why? Because He is spirit. And if He is spirit, He cannot put something into my soul. He has to deposit it into my spirit because spirit is compared with spirit. So my spirit man, now being made alive, means I can receive from God. I can receive all that He is, all that He has. It becomes the receptacle of everything that is God coming into my life. So all revelation, God does not reveal things to me in my mind. He reveals them in my spirit. Oh yes, my mind can be renewed, my spirit can, my soul can be restored, but ultimately everything comes in through my spirit man. It has to come in because that's the place of the spirit. Now, watch what happens. Here is what Paul told the Corinthian church, 1 Corinthians 2, 14. The natural man does not what? Receive the things from the Spirit of God. You see, we receive from God. We don't work for that. We don't merit that. We don't earn that. We receive. And you can receive more than you can understand. You can receive more than you can figure out. You can receive, oh, you can receive more than you believe. Ooh. Because what comes into my spirit, man, coming directly from God, it doesn't have to go through the channels of my mind. It doesn't require mental aptitude. It doesn't, this is not a religious exercise. God is putting himself into me in my spirit man. Now watch. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. He is unable. It doesn't say he's unwilling. It says he's unable. Why is he unable? Because his spirit man is dead. He is unable to grasp them because they are evaluated through the Spirit. In other words, it takes spirit to know spirit. Amen. The way I know Him is I know Him by the Spirit, my spirit. But the person who has the Spirit can evaluate everything. Oh, you and I, we can receive everything. Because when your spirit has been made alive... Do not let the enemy tell you that there are things that you cannot receive from God because your spirit is, when your spirit is alive and your spirit is well, you can receive all that God has for you and all that He is saying. Now, this is a real problem for the devil because when you are hearing from God and you are receiving what God is saying to you, that becomes, takes precedent over whatever schemes or deceptions or lies that the enemy is trying to peddle in your life. You simply will not receive it because you have already received what God has said. And the only way that the enemy can trump that is he must do something to your spirit. He must inflict and inform your spirit man to where you are no longer hearing from God so that you will readily accept what he is saying and what he is doing. Number one, it is the center of awareness. It is where I hear God. It is where I see God. It is where I experience Him in my inner man that has been made alive. Number two, let's go with another A word. How about authority? Here's one. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke 10. Now you understand that I have imparted to you my authority. Notice, 
He didn't say, I have given you authority. He said, I've given you my authority. It's always his authority. It's never mine. It will never be mine. It's always his. Now watch, I have given you that authority to do what? To trample over Satan's kingdom. Now, if you are Satan, this is bad news. Because not only do you have the Son of Man, the Son of God you have to deal with, now you have multiplied hundreds of thousands and millions of sons of the living God who all have the same authority. Because He is no longer the only begotten. He is now the captain of the salvation and He has brought what? Many sons into glory. You will trample upon every demon before you. That's not good news at the gates of hell. And you will over, whoop, whoop, overcome every power Satan possesses. But we're not done yet. Absolutely nothing will harm you as you walk in this authority. Oh! His authority guarantees me that there is no harm in whatever is happening. However, your real source of joy isn't merely that these spirits submit to your authority, but that your names are written in the journals of heaven and that you belong to God's kingdom. This is the true source of your authority. And what is Jesus talking about? Jesus is referring to spiritual authority. Because the only authority that spirits are subject to is spiritual authority in God. Spirits are not subject to civil authority. They're not a subject to government authority. If spirits, if evil spirits were subject to civil authority, there would be nobody murdering in our streets. They would be obeying the law. They don't. The, so Jesus is talking about spirit authority. Well, if, you're going to, if he's going to give me spirit authority, which he says he has, where is he going to put it? There's only one place he can put that authority. That's in my spirit man. Because my spirit man is spirit. And to get spirit authority into me, he has to put it into my spirit. And that means my spirit man is the source of force and forcefulness and crushing and conquering and overcoming and boldness and tenacity and victory. You see, I have his victory. Where is it? It's in my spirit man. You see, when we sing songs like, he has given me the victory, well, where is it? Have you ever asked him? <laughs> I mean, you say you've given me the victory. Where is it? It's right here. It's in my spirit, man. Now, this is a problem for the devil because he has no answer to the victory that you have because either you have the victory or he has the victory, but not both. And if you have the victory and he wants the victory... The only way he can get the victory is to cause your spirit man to become so infirm that you relinquish your authority to a lesser force. Wow. There is no demon. There's no evil spirit. There's no evil force that has an answer to the authority of Jesus Christ in the life of the believer, in your spirit man. Number three. What do you say? Let's go with another A word. How about this one? It is the center of anointing. Here's a great scripture. This would be a wake up for, I think, quite a few Christians in America. 1 John 2, 27. Look at the first sentence. You have an anointing. You can go out on the street and ask them. Go to a church, ask them, put a microphone. Do you have, do you have an anointing? Well, I, you know, I... I, you know, I don't feel very anointed. I, you have an anointing. Yeah. Oh, now watch. 
You what? You received it. You received it from Him. You didn't earn it. You didn't buy it. You didn't pray for it. You didn't climb up the steps of St. Peter's to get it. You received it from Him. And His anointing remains on you. Where is that anointing? Where is that spirit anointing? It's in my spirit, man. It is what Jesus promised. The out, this was the fulfillment of the outpouring. Listen to John 7. Here's Jesus. Anyone, anyone, anyone who believes in me will have rivers of living water flowing out of their heart. Oh, we're not talking about aortas now. We're talking about their inner being, right? Just like the Bible says. Now, wait a minute, Pastor Buddy. That scripture does not mention the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mention the anointing. And how do you know that's what he means? Well, how about we read the next verse? He said this about the Spirit. Which people who believed in Him were to what? Receive. You see, the anointing that you have received is an ability. It's a capability. It's a capacity. It is an enabling. It is gifting. It is joy. It is strength. And that anointing in your spirit takes precedent over whatever is happening in your soul and your body. Because it says the anointing, what does it say? Let's go back. Flowing out. It doesn't sit there. It's not stagnant. It is flowing out. So when my spirit man is healthy, my, uh, the anointing of God in my life is flowing out. And the enemy cannot have that. He cannot stand that. He cannot put up with that. Because when the anointing is flowing out of you, it means that, that whatever is in you that's coming out of you is greater than that which is coming against you or coming at you. And that's a problem for the devil. He can't have it. So he must infirm in some way. He must get your spirit man infirmed, weakened. This is why Solomon said, the spirit of a man sustains him in sickness. Because what is going on in my spirit man will take precedence over what is challenging me in my body. I am not to be ruled by what is going on in my body. Hello, my spirit man takes precedence. A healthy spirit conquers adversity. Wow. Pretty good. All right. But here's the rest of the verse. But who can bear a crushed spirit? You see, if you get your spirit crushed, if your spirit's infirmed, all bets are off. Because Solomon said, then nothing is flowing out of your inner man. The center, the command center, the communication center, the center of all of your being. This is why Paul prayed this in, to the Ephesian church. My prayer is this, that God will give you strength and power it, through His Spirit in your inner being. He's praying that their spirit man stay healthy so that they can function in the kingdom of God. Because when my spirit man is not healthy, the rest of me is not flourishing. So, let me identify very quickly one thing that the enemy wants to happen to my spirit man. He wants it to become malnourished. He wants it to be malnourished. Because what nourishes my spirit? 
Jesus told the devil, by the way, the secret's out. He told the devil, he said, man does not live by bread alone, but he lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, God's word entering into me, not just Bible, but God's voice, God's whisper, God's echo, God's words coming into me produce life in me. This is why Jesus said these words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Now here's what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah 15, 16, your words are what sustain me. They are food to my hungry soul. They bring joy to my sorrowing heart and they delight me. My spirit man thrives on hearing God. Simple. Simple. Why do you think there is such an atmosphere in our world today that is set against people hearing God? Churches by the hundreds and thousands do not make hearing God a priority when they gather. And when I'm not hearing Him, I become malnourished. Very quickly, how can you spot an unhealthy spirit? Probably not by looking in the mirror. How does a doctor spot malnutrition in someone when they come to him? How does a medical professional diagnose someone who is malnourished? Let me give you, and I'm going to just list these, the three top things, the characteristics of people who are malnourished. Are you ready? A lack of appetite and a loss of interest in food. You see, when we are no longer hungering to hear Him, we're malnourished. When it is not my priority, when it's not my passion, it's not my hunger, it's not a necessity, I need to hear God, I need to be in touch with God, I need to know what the Lord is saying and what He's doing and what He's revealing, I need to be in on that, I need a constant flow of that coming into my life, that is a sign that we are malnourished. When we lack appetite... Number two, by the way, these are right off the medical things. Tiredness and weariness. When our spirit is malnourished, we get spiritual fatigue. We get heavy. We get weighed down. We feel like we're moving through syrup. We feel dull, sluggish, slow. And the third way, a higher risk of infection and we're prone to infirmity. You see, when my spirit man is not healthy, things will take me down and put me down that would never have if my spirit were healthy. Things that have been conquered by Jesus are now conquering me. I have the victory, but it's not functioning. I have the authority, but it's not functioning. I have the awareness. I have the revelation. It's just not working. A higher risk of infection prone to infirmity. Here is what Paul told the Corinthian church, 2 Corinthians 4.16, For even though our outer person gradually wears out, our inner being is renewed every single day. Do you know just between you and me. Our spirit man needs to be refreshed. We need to be renewed. We need to hear him afresh. I want to ask you, how healthy is your spirit man? Do you recognize any of those 
symptoms of being undernourished, malnourished. All it takes to be renewed is to hear him. To pause. Breathe in. Here's what it says. Our inner humanity is breathing in new life every day. When's the last time you just took a moment to breathe in what God has? Let's pray. Congregation, I'm going to ask you if you would to stand. Because we're going to take a moment here in this place. To breathe in. As you've been taking this journey with us today, you may recognize and say, Pastor Buddy, I recognize my spirit is it's showing the signs and the symptoms of being malnourished. Now's the time. Set aside, lay down, put to the side everything else for a moment. Come to Him. Hear Him. The fresh breath of God. When's the last time that blew across your spirit, man? And renewed deep within. Take it. Own that. Claim that. Possess that. In this moment. In Jesus' name.